G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at some players this year that I think are candidates to be first time all Australians. It's hard to be completely exhaustive with this list because there are so many players that could potentially break out and surprise us and become all Australians but I've decided to go through and pick the ones that I think are the most likely. After a little bit of research, I discovered that last year's All-Australian 22 was actually comprised of 11 first-time All-Australians. So you could use that logic to suggest that maybe close to half the team again will be first-time All-Australians in 2024. Now, I'm not trying to predict which ones necessarily will. I'm not saying all of these 14 will, but I've picked a few candidates that I think justifiably we could expect to be All-Australians for the first time this season. So I'm going to crack straight into the content and uh, I've got three midfielders to throw at you to start off this list. The first one is Tom Green from GWS who uh, was taken in the 2019 draft and is unbelievably good already considering he's played just four seasons now at AFL level. He had the most disposals per game of anyone and despite playing less games, I think he had a few games out with injury in 2023, he still finished second in terms of total disposals. He averaged 32 a game with six clearances and you just feel like this kid is on an upward trajectory. Couldn't have been far away in 2023 and I just feel like it's inevitable that Tom Green will at some point win an All-Australian jumper and I don't think next year is too soon. The next one is Tim Taranto and this guy's stats are actually really interesting when you break it down. So he's been a pretty good player over the stretch. So like I've talked about before, he was uh, best and fairest in GWS's grand final year and then came to Richmond and had arguably his best season to date on paper. Polled pretty well on the brown low. 29 disposals a game, six clearances, 370 meters gained for a predominantly inside player. That's good. He also backs it up with nearly seven tackles a game and six score involvement. So all of that is really impressive on paper. And you'd have to say he had a pretty successful first season at Richmond. But if I had to diagnose what some of the issues were as to why he didn't win an All-Australian jumper. Well, first of all, All-Australian midfield spots are very, very hard to break into, but he was fourth in the league for Clangers, and Clangers by themselves are not necessarily an indicator of a bad player. I think Buddy Franklin used to have a lot of Clangers, but his disposal efficiency was just 59%, so there's clear room for improvement in terms of the way he uses the ball, and if he tightens up the screws in that respect, you would expect that Tim Taranto could easily be an All-Australian this year. The third midfielder in a row that I want to mention is Hawthorne's Jai Newcomb, who uh, was taken in the mid-season draft, probably to date the best mid-season draft pick we've ever seen uh, who made the All-Australian squad this year and he's only 22 years old and played 51 games but playing to a higher level than you'd expect a player of that age and experience. 25 disposals a game, 5.5 clearances, he's an absolute bull and you just get the sense again he's on an upward trajectory. Is it going to be 2024 where he necessarily wins his first jumper? It's entirely possible because he's already playing at a very very high standard and you could project a bit of improvement especially if Will Day misses a little bit of football. I think Newcomb stands out as a genuine contender to be a first-time All-Australian in 2024. The next contender on this list is Carlton's Jacob Wietering as a key defender. Now, I actually had to double-check to see if he definitely hadn't been All-Australian before. That was the tricky part of researching this video, finding out who and who hasn't been All-Australian. But he's been in the squad four years in a row, from 2020 all the way through to 2023. In 2020 and 2023, he also won Carlton's Best and Fairest. So he's been playing at a high standard for a while now. We do know that he's been struck down with a calf complaint. Uh, which could be a bad injury. And if he misses too much early season football, it could count against him. But I'm sort of erring on the optimistic side and thinking that Wiedering will be back pretty early, hopefully. Um, the other question is, you know, how do the other key defenders in the in the talent pool go this year? Because Darcy Moore, Cal Wilkie, Stephen May, Harris Andrews, these guys are going to be major contenders as well for this role. But I think he probably stands out as the best key back who hasn't won it yet. Let's stay with the key position players for a little bit longer. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of Ruckman for you, and there's, there's probably two that stand out to me that could conceivably be first-time All-Australians this year. Let's first of all talk about Rowan Marshall, who's just turned 28 and coming off a career best season at St Kilda. Yeah, 26.6 hitouts a game and average more than 20 touches, so a pretty well-rounded Ruckman in that sense, and, and defensively sound as well, laying five tackles a game. So again, he's probably one of the best batch of Rucks who haven't won an All-Australian jumper yet. You know, the guys he's going to be competing with will be Max Gorn, Tim Inglis, uh, maybe Sean Darcy, who I'll talk about in a sec, and maybe Jared Witts to an extent, but Rowan Marshall conceivably could have been the second ruck, in my opinion, in the 2023 All-Australian side. And his other major contender in this respect is going to be Sean Darcy, who at 25 has just obviously signed a big contract to stay at Fremantle, played just the 15 games last year and possibly could have featured closer to the All-Australian team had he played longer because he did have a monstrous 39 hitouts a game, which is by far and away his best output. That put him second in the league for hitouts per game behind Wits, and I think he's just become an incredibly important player for Fremantle when he's out of the team. I think they really feel his absence. Like I said, 
Gorn, English, and Rowan Marshall as well. Maybe Jared Witts uh, could be major contenders for this. The reason I haven't put Witts in this side is because, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's by far the oldest, and I don't know if I see that room for improvement. If he's already the number one hit out like Ruckman over the last few years without double checking that. I think he's behind these two guys, so I didn't include Jared Witts in this particular video. Now let's talk about key forwards that haven't been all Australian before. Uh, I'm gonna throw one of my own boys into the mix here with Oscar Rowan, who had a very impressive season when you consider the fact that he played in you know one of the worst teams we've seen. I don't wanna get into that. Uh, but he came seventh of the common with 53 goals. It's not bad, he was super consistent. Uh, it wasn't just that he bobbed up for massive bags and then dipped away, he was consistent all year. Didn't kick a bag of five, but kicked four bags of four. Again, I'm not necessarily saying he will win the All-Australian um, jumper this year, but you'd have to say with his talent projection uh, and hopefully a belief that West Coast will be better and certainly get more inside 50s this year, you'd hope. Then on talent, he's absolutely in the mix, but he's got to rely on Jeremy Cameron, Charlie Curno, Nick Larkey, and Tex Walker not playing better than him this year. And another key forward I'll throw into this mix, same age, Aaron Norton, who just signed an eight-year extension with the Western Bulldogs. His goal tallies over the last three years have been super consistent, but nothing really getting anywhere near the All-Australian sort of situation. He's had 47, 51, 44 goal tallies from the last three full season, and he has been a good, consistent player. That being said, I think he's capable of being a 60 goal plus forward. To be an All-Australian, I don't know what the what the threshold is, maybe 70, maybe he, I think that's within reaching distance on talent. And the thing is, I know that Norton can be a little bit divisive with people out there, but I would remind you that he's only 24 years of age, the same age as Oscar Allen. So his prime is still, he's probably just entering his prime now and could conceivably be good enough to win an All-Australian jumper this year. Like I said, Jeremy Cameron, Charlie Kerno, these guys are gonna make it tough. But all kinds of things get thrown up in the season. There could be injuries, could be inexplicable form slumps, who knows? But Norton and Allen, I think, are two candidates to win their first All-Australian jumper. Next, we'll pick a guy that I nominated 12 months ago to potentially win his first All-Australian jumper in 2023. So I will throw him in the mix again because I do think he's a good enough player to justify this. And I'm talking about Sydney's Nick Blakey, who had just come off a really strong 2022. Statistically, maybe dropped slightly in output this year uh, across a few key metrics, but still had his 20 possessions a game, 80% uh, disposal efficiency, 400 meters gained. I think he's capable of even more than that. Super quick player, and you do think potentially with a more functioning Sydney uh, side, particularly in the back half, Nick Blakey could reach his potential, and he's still quite young. So I will throw him into the mix as potentially being an outside contender for a half-back flank spot. Hugh McCluggage also strikes me as a fairly obvious candidate who could potentially get his first All-Australian jumper in 2024. Uh, last year, his output has dropped a little bit, um, and not massively, but from like 25 disposals a game the first couple of years, he just managed the 22 a game, which obviously is not massive, but he's normally on the fringes of the All-Australian team, sort of in the squad, you know, particularly if they want to pick a, a genuine wingman. McCluggage is one of the first names that come to mind, uh, but he didn't make last year's squad. That being said, I think he turns 26 this year, if I'm not mistaken. It's pretty much just entering his prime now. Brisbane's going to be a good side. I think on talent, it's a very easy case to make that Hugh McCluggage could win his first All-Australian jumper this year. The next one I've got is a little bit more of a long shot, and uh, I do kind of like the justification for it, but I think Mason Redmond might be a little bit of an underrated medium-sized defender in the comp. Uh, I think it's also a long shot when you consider the competition for like medium-sized defenders in this All-Australian team. It will be tough. Like, does Tom Stewart count as one? Probably. It's obviously Nick Dacos. Uh, but without getting too much further into that, he still made the All-Australian squad last year, and his output was very solid. 22 disposals a game, 83.3% efficiency. That's really good. Uh, and six marks, five rebound 50s. He's a pretty well-rounded defender. He did just sign a big contract to stay at Essendon. Sometimes when they sign big contracts, players tend to drop their output. But uh, on talent and projection, I think Mason Redmond is a decent chance, particularly as he's about 26 now entering his prime. Let's talk about another midfielder potentially getting close to his prime, and that is Carlton's Adam Chera, who I think has shown some pretty linear improvements since he started his career at Fremantle all the way to now, and put in a career best season, I would say, in 2023, as the team also got better. 25 touches a game, five clearances. I don't think he's ever gonna be the number one man at Carlton as long as Sam Walsh is there. And Patrick Cripps, obviously, sometimes becomes like a superstar and then drops back a little bit. But I think Chera has got a very good resume to date. And again, only 24 years of age. It's kind of like comparing him to Brayshaw and some of the other names around that 2017 draft class. 24 is quite young. So you look at the talent projection, Adam Chera could be in the mix to 
be an All-Australian midfielder. If not this year, you'd think sometime over the next three. But he's not a bad little smoky to bet on because I think he's a good player. Next, let's talk about another halfback flanker in Isaac Quainall, who did make the All-Australian squad in 2023. And a big feature of his game is obviously his speed, his rebound, and his intercepting. I think he's a top 10 player in the game for intercepts per game as of last year. You factor in as well, Collingwood are a good side, got a functioning back half. The fact that he's just turned 24 just means that his best football's ahead of him. And I think, again, it would make sense to me if Quainall's around the mix for the All-Australian team. Next, we'll talk about a small forward in Cozzy Pickett, who, uh, again, has also had a pretty good, consistent three years at AFL level. I think I noted in a video the other day, he kicked 37 goals last year, which is the least goals he's kicked in the last three years, but still a pretty good uh, return. Uh, but he's also getting more tackles than ever with four tackles a game. So we're seeing a pretty well-rounded small forward, a little bit reminiscent of Charlie Cameron when you consider the, the dangerous goals and pressure forward mix. He's got a fair bit to do to catch Charlie Cameron. Charlie Cameron's been kicking 55 goals plus like for years on end and probably the number one tackler inside 50, or he's close to that, I can't remember. Either way, he feels like the, the heir apparent to the next Charlie Cameron in this league as Charlie Cameron's career obviously gets a little bit closer to the end. So he does have some competition for spots. You know, is he competing with Toby Green? Maybe not, uh, but he probably will be competing with Charlie Cameron. So stiff competition, but again, so many different things can happen with injuries and form slumps, etc. that Cozzy Pickett could be around the mix, I reckon, in 2024. The next one that's a little bit of a left field call again is Essendon's Nick Martin, a player who made a big splash when he joined Essendon as a SSP player, if I'm not mistaken, had a great first season and only improved in 2024, getting about 22 touches a game at 73% efficiency, 330 metres per game. He looks like a really good young wingman of the competition. Now, those are not all Australian numbers, but you consider how much he's improved in a short space of time and the fact that he's still pretty young. I think uh, as he gets to that 40, 45 game mark, I think that's where he sits about now. Now, we could see him take his game to the next level. So it's a bit more of a uh, long shot call. I don't mind this for Nick Martin. Now, I, I was doing this stream the other day and people were telling me that he's been training at preseason off a halfback flank, maybe playing a bit more as that halfback distributor. Does that help him for all Australian? Well, it probably helps him find a little bit more of the ball than a wingman. It's a little bit hard to find the footy as a wingman sometimes. That being said, if he plays as a halfback flanker, I think the competition is more rife for him. But either way, a player to keep your eye on in 2024. And finally, another long shot in uh, Gold Coast, Matthew Rao, which may or may not seem like a long shot, but he's not super close to all Australian calculations right now. He had 21 disposals a game, seven clearances and 12 brown low votes. So at the moment, a very inside dominant player. But we've seen incremental improvement for him. He's obviously had injury issues over the first four seasons at AFL level that he's had, and I think he's tracking okay. It would require a pretty big bump in improvement from him, but considering he's a number one draft pick and his, his overall talent, that I think is very clear to see. For him, it's, it's probably about improving what he does around the ground as much as what he's doing in the contest. He seems to have that pretty nailed on. He's an important player for Gold Coast push. If he has a big year, not only is that a huge boost for Gold Coast, but I don't think it's a million miles off being possible that he is in the All-Australian team in 2024. Anyway, guys, those are my nominations for 14 players that could potentially win their first All-Australian jumper in 2024. Let me know in the comments who I've forgotten. I'm sure there's going to be heaps. It's a pretty uh, broad topic and also kind of hard to research for. There's no like one categorical list of best players who have never won an All-Australian. So I'm sure I missed somebody, but let me know in the comments. You guys always help inform me and point me in the right direction if I ever make mistakes and stuff like that, which I appreciate. So hope you enjoyed the content. I'll see you in the next video and make sure you subscribe. Cheers.